Hi, my name is Brittany Taroli. I am the quality manager here at Alliance LLC. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly test using a Gauss meter and an axial probe. The first thing that you need to make sure of is that you are in a non-magnetic environment, which means no metal in the table, no metal jewelry on your body, including watches, and no other magnets on the table around you. The next step would be to plug in your probe. But before you plug it in, you wanna make sure that your Gauss meter is turned off because you could damage the meter if you plug it in when it's on. Once you plug it in, you're going to press the power button and it will take a few seconds to turn on. Once your probe has turned on, the next step would be to zero it out. So you need a zero Gauss chamber to do that. You would put the probe inside, hit the zero button, and then it's gonna take it a couple of seconds to zero out completely. The next step is to calibrate your probe. You need to do this before every time you test. So in order to do that, you need a magnet that already has a known value on it. You would put your probe inside there and the reading that you get on your Gauss meter should match the reading that would already be on the known value magnet. After you do that, you can choose your functions on your Gauss meter. For permanent magnets, you always want to choose the DC function. Your units can be in either Gauss or Tesla, and your range can be set on auto range, or you can choose your range according to the magnets that you are testing. After that is done, the final thing you need to do is make sure you know where your Hall element is located inside of your probe. Some drawings for magnetic materials will specify a certain Gauss or millitesla value at a certain gap from the magnet surface. It is important to understand that this gap is not between the magnet surface and the surface of the probe. Gauss meter probes of all types have a sensing device called a Hall element buried inside the plastic structure of the probe. In almost all cases, this element is protected and therefore cannot be seen. Its position within the probe must be found by looking at the drawing supplied by the probe's manufacturer. In this case, the element is 0.4 millimeters away from the end of the probe. Therefore, when this drawing asks for a testing gap of 3 millimeters, it is actually 2.60 millimeters away from the end of the testing probe. All reputable Gauss meter suppliers will have details of the sensing element and its location within the probe. If you have a Gauss meter and do not have a drawing of the probe or any information about the sensing element location, you may contact the equipment supplier or send your probe to us at Alliance, where we can determine the centerline location of the Hall element within the probe. Once you have found where your Hall element is located, your functions are set, and your probe is zeroed and calibrated, you can begin testing your magnets. For an axial probe, you would have a magnet that is magnetized through the thickness. You would use an axial probe to measure the magnetic field that is parallel to the magnet. So you would hold it like this, right on the flat top, and make sure you hold it straight. Any angle that you move the probe will give you a different reading on the Gauss meter. Just make sure you hold it straight, and that's how you test with an axial probe. If you would like to know how to test using a transverse probe, we have other videos on our website, as well as written instructions of all the testing that we do. Or you can give us a call at 219-548-3799, and we'll be happy to help.